everyone. It is Friday. Finally made it to Friday. It's the first Friday of April and also it is Good Friday. And the reason I don't say Happy Good Friday, nor did I post anything that says Happy Good Friday, is that it wasn't really a good day, was it? So like when I was a kid, I was raised Catholic and I don't know, I had like the mistaken impression that Good Friday was the same day as the Last Supper, right? So I thought, well, this was a good day because it was like the last day that Jesus got to hang out with his disciples and have a really nice dinner and, and do their thing, right? But that's actually not what Good Friday is, <laughs> as I learned later. Holy Thursday was the dinner. Good Friday was not good at all especially if you were Jesus, because Good Friday was actually the day that Jesus was crucified. And there is no stretch of the imagination that could ever like link good and crucified together, right? So I guess they look to extrapolate the good for Good Friday is that is the day that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and redeemed us all those who believed and continue to believe in him. And that is the only thing that makes it good because being nailed to a cross. And like, when you read the historical thing about like actually what killed you from like hanging like that is not good at all. But the fact that Jesus died for our sins and really broke generational curses that had con continued since the beginning of time to then and and um, to provide redemption for us and our sins was really an amazing thing. So that was the only good thing about Good Friday. I cannot imagine that um, anything else regarding actually being crucified was good at all. But that is not what I'm here to talk about. The reason I've mentioned Jesus on the cross, besides it being Good Friday, was about the breaking of generational curses and the healing of generational trauma. And in a way that is what Jesus signed up to do when he died on the cross was to heal this like generational um, division and this generational trauma that had started back in the garden of Eden. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is I have been helping break some generational curses and heal generational trauma as well in the work that I've been doing with my clients. Not as dramatic as Jesus by any stretch of the imagination, but just as healing. So I just wanted to share with you like something brief about the client that I've um, been working with, mother daughter clients that I've been working with over the last couple of months. And the mother, um, was carrying some pretty heavy generational stuff. So these are things that had um, impacted her family. So it impacted not only her mother, but her grandmother and probably beyond her own grandmother. Um, but she knows for sure through her grandmother. And with this family, this generational, you know, curse, so to speak, I'm just gonna call it a generational curse or generational trauma. Um, so started really from her, from her knowledge and during her lifetime, she's around 50 years old. Um, she can remember her grandmother, her grandmother had seven children and her grandmother had always chosen favorites, right? So her grandmother had her one or two favorites of the seven children and basically everyone else knew for certain that they were not her favorite. Like she did not make it the least bit of a secret. She didn't try to hide it. She didn't try and like pretend to be equal and love the children equally. Like she straight up was hateful to her children that were not her favorites, right? Um, and my um, client's mother was one of those children that was not the favorite, one of the favorites. And so she was treated very poorly by her mother, along with a couple of her other siblings, and made to feel like everything that went wrong in the world was like her fault. So like, 
um, the, the non-favorite children were blamed for everything. Every, like, you know, anything like that didn't that happen that didn't go well within the family or within the town or within that, that like affected them, it was blamed on the non-favorite children, right? And this got passed down. Her mother then also had three children and my client was of the three, they deemed not favorite. So my client's mother would treat her as if she was the cause of everything bad in their lives from the time she was a small child. And I could relate to this a little bit because my own mother kind of did something similar to me, not quite to the extreme. And then my mother also got sick and passed away. So I didn't have to like experience it for as many years as this client of mine did. But this client of mine, um, her, you know, her mother's elderly now and, and like, it's still a thing. Like her, the mother would accuse her of stealing, like even her toothbrush. The mom also has dementia that she would accuse my client of stealing her toothbrush, stealing like really anything that like things that I'm sure because she has um, dementia, like misplaced herself. But, um, so this was something that my client has dealt with for almost 50 years. So like her whole life. Right. And in our work together, you know, was able to one, bring the bond of her and her daughter back together, have her realize, and she didn't treat her daughter like she was the cause of all her problems or anything, but realize where those, those reactions and those things that her mother had done to her, that she was also carrying that some of that forward to her daughter. And then she was also able through the, our work together um, and the processes that I take, took her through um, was able to find peace and really let go and like allow also God to come in and heal this trauma like that had been passed from generation to generation in her life and we're, she got to be for the first time in her life at peace with everything and no longer like feeling the darts and the daggers that her mom still continues to throw. Like it was almost like they, you know, it's like if somebody were to throw a dagger at you instead of it like, you know, piercing you in the chest, like it would get to like before it got to you, it would just drop to the ground. Like that's how it was for her. So it completely, she was able to completely heal and break through this generational curse, this generational damage where those daggers were still because her parent and her mom is still alive, were still being thrown, but now they just drop. And she was able to, from a healthy place, just say, I'm, I'm just not going to engage and I'm not going to try to be a part of this person's life because there's nothing that I can do to like change how they're going to treat me. And I'm no longer willing to allow their maltreatment to touch me and to break my peace. And it was such a beautiful moment. I could see just like almost like a weight taken off of my client's shoulders. And I, it was like, almost like literally I could see like, not with like my, my eyeballs, eyeballs, but like my spiritual eyes, like I could see like her being healed from that. And it was such a powerful, powerful moment, you guys, to have this healing, to have this healing from, from wounds that who knows how many generations they actually go back to be healed. And for like this um, this pattern to be broken here with her and not to continue on to her daughter and not to continue that on where her daughter could then pass it on to her daughter, like literally breaking this generational curse. I don't even know anything to call it except for a curse. <laughs> and that's kind of a weird word, but it's really the only thing I can think of. But to see her really break this generational curse and heal this for her and going forward, 
and just what a powerful moment this is. And you guys, like, within just a few minutes, she, like, lit up and she started telling me about these ideas that she had this, for this business that she wanted to start and, and just like how it matched with her experience. And, and it was just like lit a fire in her soul. And it was something she didn't allow herself to really seriously entertain or seriously go for before because of this generational weight that was holding her back. So it's just such a powerful moment. And I wanted to share this because this happened, um, just this week, uh, and because this being Good Friday and because Jesus came to break the generational curse that we had or people had going forward for those that believed in him, it's just such a timely message. And I would invite like anyone who's watching this to think about what are they ready to heal? What generational curses, what things have you been carrying with you in your life? Are you ready to heal? What things are you seeing that are, you know, you're starting to see those same things appear in your kid or maybe just early signs of it because you're passing it down? Like, what are you ready to heal for you and your child and your future grandchildren, whether they exist yet or not? <laughs> like, what are you ready to heal? This is the season of healing. This is the season of, you know, Jesus died for our sins on Good Friday. And this is the season of, you know, breaking that generational curse. So this is the season of breaking those generational curses. And what happened on Sunday, y'all, which we'll find out on Easter, but everybody knows Jesus was resurrected, right? So right now, this, this is the perfect time to break those generational curses and resurrect your life the relationships in your life, your family life, your relationships to your kids, your spouse, and resurrect that to new life so it can be fruitful, right? Can be fruitful and you'll no longer be weighed down and held back by those things that are old generational curses. So I invite you to, to think about and to look hard at your own life, because sometimes it can be hard to admit when you need help or when there's something that you have not, you know, is still weighing you down and hasn't healed from you. And it might just be too easy to like have a beer at the end of the day or a glass of wine at the end of the day and not think about it. But I would challenge you to take a look at those things and to say, OK, this generational curse stops with me. I, I'm not going to let it affect me anymore. I'm ready to heal it and I'm ready for it not to be passed on and not to harm my children and my and future generations. So that is the healing work that I do primarily with moms and teens, but I um, also do it with fathers as well. In fact, I have a father that is booked onto my calendar, a couple of fathers that are booked onto my calendar for next week for consults. So um, if this is something that is interesting to you, something that appeals to you, or something that maybe you're just curious about and you want to find out more information about how I work and how I can help you break generational curses in your family, go ahead and text MOON, which is M-O-O-N, like the moon in the sky, that is my last name, to 90407. That will get you a link texted directly to you, and that will allow you to book appointment for consult directly on my calendar from your cell phone. If you're like, hey, I want to chat with you first in DM, you can feel free to direct message me here on Facebook Messenger, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions and then see if it's appropriate to move forward with getting on a Zoom with me for a consult. So reach out. I am so excited and so willing, able, and happy to help you heal from these generational curses, help you not pass down these things to your teens, and really help you rebuild those relationships with your children, your spouse, and everyone in your life. So I wish you a amazing rest of your Friday. I will be going to Good Friday services at six o'clock at Christ Community Church in Huntersville, North Carolina. If you're in this area and want to join me, I will see you there. 
otherwise, I will check in with you next week because I will be checking stuff on Facebook and I'll be checking messages if you DM me, but I probably will not make any lives this weekend unless something really amazing happens and I have to share. So there we have it. I look forward to hearing from you. Text Moon to 90407 to book directly a consult with me or DM me. Take care.